One other important aspect that I would like to bring up uh, is, uh, you know, how do you back up this entire thing? Uh, because specifically with hier hierarchical deterministic wallets, BIP32, as you mentioned earlier, right? Here you have one root backup, your 12 or 24 recovery words, and out of that you get all your public keys and all your public key scripts and so on. So it's very easy to make a one-time backup for the entire duration of your wallet. Um, now, this wasn't always the case, right, in, in Bitcoin's early days. And do you think that we will go back to a future where updates will be a lot different than what they are now? Yeah, so so one of the things that Miniscript does is uh, you can include an XPUB or an XPRIV inside the Miniscript itself. So the key, if you have a key expression, the key can be, you know, a pub key, private key, or bit32 XPUB XPRIV. And, and in the end, uh, what you get for Miniscript is just a string. So you just get, you know, a string with a bunch of parentheses and, and other stuff in it. Uh, but it's still just a, spring, a string and you can back up that string just like you would back up, say, an individual private key. But because this string also includes, you know, you can include your XPRIV and all the derivation paths, uh, this backup actually can describe your entire wallet as well. So, it probably won't be like bit 39 where you, where you can memorize 24 words, but you can still get a string that you can write down on paper if you really wanted to, or, you know, copy to some text file that you encrypt or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and, and it would still be a, a backup of your wallet. Now you may have to back up multiple strings for like change, uh, or if you just have different scripts going on in your wallet. Um, but that's a, a more complicated topic it's still it's still roughly the same thing where you just have strings to to store somewhere yeah but that's actually interesting right because with multi-sig wallets right just having your 24 words is not going to be enough right? because you need to know the public keys of the others so there you will need to back up some additional wallet in any case right and it seems with output script descriptors and miniscript this just becomes uh like you can encode the entire information uh, in one compact string and somehow then encode this in, you know, a QR code, uh, potentially even some humanly understandable words or something. Um, yeah. but yeah, this is very promising. No? And, and, and another thing is that, um, even with bit 39 right now, you have your 24 words, uh, it, try importing your 24 words into different wallets and you will get different addresses every time. And that's because everyone uses, well, ideally everyone uses the same derivation paths, but right now, Many different, many wallets use different derivation paths for, for their addresses. You know, they, uh, the common one is BIP44, 4984, but sometimes wallets will use a different derivation path and this information isn't encoded in that seed phrase. So even with your BIP39 mnemonic, you still have to record the derivation paths that you use. No one does this, uh, and it's actually kind of a problem. <laughs> Uh, there's also the other thing of, you know, the, the seed phrase only tells you keys. It doesn't tell you what address type. It doesn't tell you if it's, if it's, you know, PDPKH, legacy address, or if it's SegWit address. And, you know, hopefully in six months, it won't, uh, when we have taproot, it, it doesn't tell you if it's taproot. So, so you still have to store that information somewhere as well. But of course, no one does that. And that's also a problem. Uh, descriptors, Pretty much solves it because in your descriptor, you can, you put your derivation path and the descriptor tells you the script pub key, which therefore tells you the address type. So descriptors like bundles up all the things that you need to back up into one string or a couple strings that you just put somewhere. 